In comparing material with non-material culture, the first being the objects and technologies we create, and the second are customs, beliefs and attitudes, the speaker gives greater emphasis to the material culture. He gives the example of the development of genetic science and the benefits it has brought to mankind, despite a fair amount of opposition. Beauty contests, whether it's Miss Universe or Miss Teen International, are demeaning to women and out of sync with the times. Opponents say that they are nothing more than symbols of decline. Since Australians Jennifer Hawkins and Lauren Eagle were crowned Miss Universe and Miss Teen International respectively, there has been a dramatic increase in interest in beauty pageants in this country. At random times throughout the day, the program asked some 2,200 participants what they were doing, what they were thinking about and how they felt. Turns out that people spend nearly half their waking hours thinking about something other than what they're doing. And that whether and where their thoughts tend to stray is a better predictor of their feelings than what they're actually up to. Pugetz Lynn Heller suggests that hunters of extraterrestrial life may want to listen particularly closely for signals originating at star systems within that narrow band of galactic sky. Advanced civilizations there may have already detected us using the transit method, they say, and may now be sending us a message. You might think of this paper, then, like a treasure map, for intelligent life.
Each tube-shaped microbot is a sandwich of three materials. A graphene outer layer, which binds to heavy metals. A middle layer of nickel, which gives the bots magnetic polarity, so they can be pulled through wastewater with magnets. And platinum inside, for propulsion. Just add a bit of peroxide to the wastewater, and it'll react with the platinum to form water and oxygen bubbles, which propel the tubes along. To examine what we really think about creativity, scientists ask students to present ideas for how airlines can get more revenue from their passengers. Half the students were told to come up with novel solutions, and the rest were asked to stick with something more tried and true. Other students who then listened to these pitches rated those who were innovative as having less leadership potential. Collins and Greg Stock, Yosemite's park geologists, wanted to know if small rock movements, induced by changing temperatures, might weaken cracks and contribute to rock falls. So the researchers who were both climbers found a suitable fracture near the base of a 500-meter tall cliff and installed instruments called crack meters, which monitored the width of the crack over time. Over time a split would have appeared in wolf populations, he says, those wolves that feared humans, and those that didn't. So this would have facilitated, I think, the domestication process. At which point humans deliberately took wolves as pets. But that domestication process, France says, 
may have happened more than once, first in the West, in Europe, and again in the Far East, in Asia. Nell says that, in order to seek protecting from their furry foes, birds actually prefer to build their nests in plots of swamp with a resident alligator. In fact, in one study a graduate student planted fake alligators. The birds seem to prefer to build nests close to them. Where there's a water source, there are alligators, so it's sort of this mode of protection around these colonies. Then the researchers thought, what if they could tap into this energy to develop a sort of sweat-powered bio-battery their proof-of-concept setup topped out at only about 4 microwatts of juice not even enough to run a watch. But with better electronics, exercising in the future could make dirty clothes and some clean energy. In 1998, James Thompson pronounced that he had isolated human embryonic stem cells in the laboratory. At last, these powerful cells were within the grip of scientists to experiment with, understand, and develop into fixes for the things that go wrong.
Clichés are worn out, overused in over-familiar phrases, and the entomology of the word helps to explain this. Originally, a cliché or stereotype was a printer's term for a preset block of type with phrases used frequently in the newspapers. The word has since adopted a negative meaning and careful writers avoid them where they can. The medical center issued a statement saying that patient care was not compromised while their data was unavailable. Still, it's unsettling to hear that a hospital is shut out of parts of its own computer systems and unable to communicate electronically. Cooking certainly tenderizes food, making it easier to chew and digest. But evidence for human cook fires goes back only about 500,000 years, if that. Homo erectus had already evolved weaker jaws, and smaller teeth, more than a million years before that. So Lieberman and his colleague Catherine Zink began their investigation by recreating a Paleolithic dinner, yams, carrots, beets, and goat meat. In order to achieve the free flow of goods and services, with work and capital between the member countries, they needed to establish mutual politics in areas as diverse as agriculture, transport, and working conditions. When they had agreed on these policies, they became legal. Now, though, the EU is concerned with a far wider range of issues.
Dolphins have adopted group living as a response to living in close contact with other animals in the ocean, some of which kill dolphins for food. Living in social groups makes it easier to hunt for food and, in a dangerous environment, it makes sense in terms of safety to move about in large numbers. Stem cells are the body's master cells, the rare material from which we are built. Unlike normal body cells, they can reproduce an indefinite number of times and, when manipulated in the right way, can turn themselves into any sort of cell in the body. The most versatile stem cells are those found in the embryo at just a few days old. This ball of a few dozen stem cells eventually goes on to form everything that makes up a human. When the European Economic Community was established in 1957, its aim was, in broad terms, to move towards closer political and economic cooperation. Today, the much bigger European Union has a far-reaching importance on many aspects of our lives, from the conditions we work under, to the safety standards we must adhere to, and the environment in which we live. Aldina Franco of the University of East Anglia, is one of the scientists who studied the stork's use of landfills in Portugal. GPS tracking devices on 17 birds showed that the landfill life might mean up to 100-kilometer round trips to feed healthy distances, but far shorter than their historic migration routes.
The researchers think that this kind of coordination might have evolved because woodpeckers invest so much time and energy carving out their nest hole in a tree. If they were kicked out and had to start over, they might not get a chance to reproduce and fledge their offspring. The Roman state was tested almost to destruction by the defeat at Cannae by the Carthaginians led by Hannibal, and according to the historian Polybius it was only what he called the peculiar virtues of the Roman constitution that allowed it to survive this crisis. What we experience is processed by the brain into memories in three stages. First, there is the sensory input, which is momentary. This is then stored in the short-term memory. If this experience is important or meaningful to us, we will reinforce the memory, possibly by repetition, and it will then be stored in the long-term memory. Florida's Everglades are home to lots of large wading birds, like egrets and herons. But the glades also have lots of raccoons and possums. For the mammals, the birds' nests are an all-you-can-eat buffet. And when an invasion occurs, sometimes thousands of birds will abandon their nests. And leave, and there is littered remains of dead chicks and eggs that have been eaten, stated Lucas Nell, an ecologist at the University of Georgia.
but the connection does suggest your photos and social media posts can be used for more than bragging about brunch. Sharing this data could be so valuable for academic research. We can actually use this data to do something good in the world. Like giving local organizations and urban planners a better look at how and why cities change. All you've got to do, is to add a few tags. The audio which includes more than 1,000 separate data files, was captured in the early 1970s by the late Hetty Van Der Rate. She recorded the various screams, barks, and how calls made by a group of chimps, including 17 youngsters, living in the Gombe National Park in Tanzania. Investigators also compared those microbes with those living in 52 other soil samples taken from all around the planet. The park had organisms that also exist in deserts, frozen tundra, forests, rainforests and prairies. Antarctica was the only area that had microbes that did not overlap with those found in Central Park. Only a small percentage of the park's microbes were found to be already listed in databases. Some of the pain patients may become hooked, or their meds may find their way to friends or relatives who take them recreationally. Or a prescription opioid user may transition to heroin. 
Heroin is just another opioid drug, so the brain doesn't distinguish whether it comes from a pharmacy or from a street drug dealer. So there's tremendous availability of prescriptions. There are some 260 million prescriptions written in each year for opioids. That's not tablets. That's prescriptions. So it's millions and millions of these and some of them are available for diversion and used inappropriately. It's projected that, over the next hundred years, temperatures on Earth could rise an average of nearly 5 degrees Celsius. While some animals might be able to migrate north to escape the brunt of the heat, plants can't uproot themselves quite so easily. Researchers wondered whether the creatures that disperse plant seeds might be able to help. The scientists say this is the first documented instance of nectar that attracts a particular animal assistant being produced outside of a nectary. In fact, the observed nectar bleeding might actually be an early system that evolved to include the nectaries found in other plants today, a process that
Investigations like this one have been plodding along for 40 years, and some studies like one following the deadly Kobe quake in 1995 have found similar correlations, but study author Alastair Skelton, a professor of geochemistry at Stockholm University, says the unpredictable study subject makes it tough to get funding, because you can in no way guarantee a result. So I'll get three years of money, but if there's no earthquake, there's no result. In 1861, Matthew Brady, a well-known portrait photographer, approached President Lincoln requesting permission to move freely about the country photographing the Civil War. Lincoln granted him permission to travel anywhere with the Union armies, and his record of this conflict brought home to millions the horrors of war. The most powerful among these were the Mthathwa under the leadership of Dinjizweo, who radically changed some aspects of traditional life during his reign. Formerly, military activity was based on local recruitment men from a district would fight together under their chief. While cliché tilde copyright s in writing reveal lazy thinking and are to be avoided at all costs, in the graphic arts they become essential, helping to get the message across quickly. 
clearly and with emotional force. This is especially true of advertising and propaganda where the impact must be immediate. A team of Johns Hopkins scientists study sodium channels responsible for electrical signaling in nerve cells from humans and from cockroaches. Spider venom protein messes with these sodium channels which is why venom is dangerous. The researchers then use spider venom protein to disrupt the channels and thus clarify exactly how the channels function. Not all solar energy capture devices make electricity directly. For example, steam generated from solar energy can turn turbines, which then produce electricity. And, in what could be especially useful in remote regions, solar steam can desalinate water and be used in sanitation and equipment sterilization. Researchers tested water and sediment at the cedars. Some samples got dosed with mercuric chloride to kill any life present. Those dosed samples produced no methane. But the samples in which microbes were allowed to survive did put out methane, confirming that at least some of the methane at the springs is indeed biological in origin.
Chakra Bordi studied that process in large thunderstorm systems over the Tropica, using data from geostationary and circumpolar satellites. He found that when more aerosols seed the air, like in places with lots of industrial or agricultural pollution, the same amount of water vapor gets absorbed by a larger number of aerosols. Meaning tinier than usual cloud particle size. But that blockage can be cleared by applying an electric field of 1,600 volts per centimeter, parallel to the chocolate's flow. The effect would allow chocolatiers to cut cocoa butter by 10 to 20 percent and still not clog the pipes. The study appears in the Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences. The problem is, that increased immune vigilance has a side effect, allergies. Our speculation is that this is some kind of trade-off. In the past you needed to resist some kind of pathogen, and the trade-off or sacrifice you have to make is increased responsiveness to non-pathogenic allergens. So next time some of you get the springtime sniffles, blame your distant ancestor the one with the heavy brow ridge. <laughs> 